Okay, let's take a look at the structures of the shark brain. Starting with the main central part, we have the cerebrum, the optic lobes, the cerebellum, the oracles of the cerebellum, these two structures on either side, the medulla oblongata, and after that, the fourth ventricle. After the fourth ventricle, the rest is the spinal cord. Coming off of the cerebrum, we can see the olfactory tract here, and just a little bit at the top, that swelling of the olfactory bulb, which contains olfactory nerve one. The olfactory sac is not really visible here, but it is contained within those nasal capsules. As we're going through the cranial nerves of the shark, you'll notice that a lot of these structures are dominated by branchings off of the combined fifth and seventh cranial nerves, the trigeminal facial trunk, combining the trigeminal, the fifth, and the facial, the seventh, which then merge fibers and split fibers and combine them into different branchings. When you're naming the branchings, you should include the branch of the facial, the branch of the trigeminal, where applicable. Cranial nerve one, we'll look at the olfactory tract. Going to the olfactory bulb, cranial nerve one is the olfactory nerve. The optic nerve, if you carefully move the eye kind of down and forward, we don't want to snap our trochlear, but if we look, we can look on the other side. But if we look underneath towards that front of the orbital recess here, you can see a nerve cord coming out of that medial part of the eye right here. That's number two, your optic nerve. Your oculomotor nerve is a little bit tricky to see, but if you lift your eye, you can see a few little branches coming off of this structure right here. And if you follow those branches, they're going to each of the eye muscles. Just looking closely there, you can see a branch coming up, a branch extending sideways, going over to the various rectus muscles or the muscles that move the eye. That's what we're seeing here. Number three, ocular motor nerve with several branches. Number four, your trochlear nerve is this really delicate structure here. It's passing through the trochlear foramen where we left a little part of that medial orbital wall. And it's going to your superior oblique muscle. Notice the other rectus muscles are kind of originating at a single point and fanning out across the eyeball. The superior oblique is responsible for turning the eye in a, in a different way than these rectus muscles. So superior oblique with that trochlear nerve that passes through the trochlear foramen to the brain. Cranial nerve four. Looking at the trigeminal facial trunk here, the trigeminal nerve and the facial nerve combine in various places and split in various places. Let's start from the front of the chondrocranium and move our way back. So this long nerve here is a superficial ophthalmic trunk, ophthalmic, <laughs> and that combine it is a trunk because it combines fibers from two different nerves. So it's combining five and seven, the trigeminal and facial, so both send nerve fibers out to these various branches. Uh, so this is superficial ophthalmic trunk. The deep ophthalmic trunk, you can actually see splitting off right here. It crosses underneath this rectus muscle, passes over the back of the eyeball, right here, and you can see it extending right here, extending towards the front of that orbital recess, towards that anterior orbital shelf right here. So that 
structure mm -hmm. is your deep ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. It only contains fibers from the trigeminal nerve. Superficial ophthalmic trunk of both 5 and 7. Deep ophthalmic trunk, which you can see here, here, and here, of tri the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. If we move the eye up and out of the way, we can see the infraorbital trunk. And again, trunk is combining fibers from two different nerves. So both fibers from the trigeminal, number five, and the facial, number seven, are passing through this large trunk. Up towards the front of that orbit, we can see it splitting into a structure that aims more rostrally and a structure that projects out to the side. This is the maxillary branch heading more rostrally, the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, nerve 5, and then going more laterally is the buccal branch of the facial nerve, nerve 7, both coming off of the infraorbital trunk, which has both nerve fibers. Also underneath the eye, we can see branching off here and going in front of your spiracle, this is your mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, branching off here and passing just behind the eye, in front of the spiracle, behind the eye, is your mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. Looking at your spiracle, just going, going just behind that spiracle, branching off here, is your hyomandibular branch of the facial. So all of these structures again, branching off from that trigeminal facial trunk. This is the last branch, the long branch that we're looking at, the hyomandibular branch of the facial. Mentally pair that with the mandibular branch of the trigeminal. So two things, framing that spiracle, both going towards the mandible, mandibular, hyomandibular, trigeminal, facial. Off of your hyomandibular branch, we push our nerve 8 to one side here, get out of here. <laughs> we can see another little branch. You may have to dig through some cartilage to find this. Mm -hmm. Heading downwards towards the roof of the mouth, the palatine branch of the facial. So facial, facial, <laughs> palatine going down towards that palate, that roof of the mouth, hyomandibular going behind the spiracle, behind where that mandible is. I've been holding this little scrappy nerve out of the way because it sort of obscures our vision. This is your eighth cranial nerve, so the vestibulocochlear or auditory nerve right here. This is very short because the structures that it is innervating, we have removed, but they were right, right in front of it, so it's not like it had very far to travel. Continuing back, we have the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine, Then we have a fairly substantial vagus nerve right here, right next to our spinal cord, coming right off of the bottom of your medulla oblongata. We also have a few ganglia to look at. So a ganglion is a thickening of a nerve where you have um, just a denser cluster of nerve fibers. So along where our palatine branch of the facial departs from the hyomandibular branch of the facial, we have a thickening here, which is the geniculate ganglion. And geniculate means knee, so you can think about it's that, that sort of crux here, um, a bent place in the nerve, the geniculate ganglion, as opposed to the petrosal ganglion. For the petrosal ganglion, you can see where a few nerve fibers depart from your glossopharyngeal nerve right here. And this is the thickening part, the petrosal ganglion. So that is our shark brain. Ooh, ha -ha.